You are listening to Money Making Mothers with Carla Edwards, where we discuss the highs and lows of being a working parent, how to master the art of spinning plates, and remind ourselves that just because you became a mother does not mean your dreams no longer exist. You can have it all. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Money Making Mothers where I'm joined by Frankie Kane who is a new mother, she's running a salon and she is just real. She uses humour to get through highs and lows and just very honest and really, really funny. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. Hello, I'm Frankie Kane, I'm 29 years old, mother of one seven month old baby girl, Clarice. Um, I'm married, my husband works away and I own a hairdressing salon, hair and beauty salon um, with my best friend, we've had it for two years um, and I've just been flitting between running a business and having a baby. Brilliant, well welcome on and I'm buzzing to have you because you've got a little ickle baby so you're mm-hmm. going through the new motherhood and running the business as well. So it's going to be really good for people who have just had a baby and gone through yeah. all the stages. So how you first, how have you found it, like being a mum? Uh, so different than what I thought. I knew it was going to be hard. I didn't realise it was going to be as hard as this. I knew it was going to be lovely and I didn't realise it was going to be as bloody lovely as this. Yeah. It's- so it's like the best and hardest job ever, isn't it? Yeah. It's a... Uh- it's much more tiring than people say as well. Yeah. Like exhausting. Um, so what I want to talk about is obviously is how you've managed to juggle being a mom, especially with you being a new mom and still run a business. So firstly, why do you do what you do? What's brought you to, why did you begin the business and, and how have you found doing it since you've begun? So I started hairdressing when I was 16 um, when I was at school, I worked in a salon from when I was 14. I just always wanted to be a hairdresser. When I was a kid, I never thought about being a salon owner. I thought about being a hairdresser because I liked it. I liked being in a salon, chatting to women and all, all that kind of thing. And then um, as time went on, I realized that I wasn't making very much money and things that, like, that my bosses were doing I was thinking oh that's good and wanting I wanted to do it I wanted to tell people why don't we do it like this and why don't we do it like that but you can't if you're not in charge and then um me and my best friend always used to say me and Sean would say let's start a business let's do our when we do our salon when we win the lottery and make our salon and then it got to the point where we were like well why not why don't we do the salon and it was this pipe dream and it just snowballed and it just became this reality and it, and it really is like the hands down the best thing I've ever ever done is it until I had the baby yeah. it's the second best thing I've ever done <laughs> <laughs> so where did you grow your balls from then to do it because it must have took some balls to take that jump we hammed each other up me and Sean um we but both also, you know, don't get confused you've got two Sean's is that right oh yeah so I've got a husband Sean and I've got my best friend Sean um and yeah I've got two Sean's um so my best friend Sean I've known longer than my husband Sean um and I won't say he's my favorite but you know um it gives me less jip uh yeah so me and Sean my work Sean um we just egged each other on like we can do it we can do it and he had times when he was like, I don't do it anymore, I don't do it anymore. And I was the one egging him on. And then um, when we opened, we were both, we had like major, major anxiety. Um, but it was just, it just had to be done. We just talked about it and talked about it. And I just had this nagging thing. And um, I just got married and like my husband works away. So it was kind of like, do we want kids yet? No, we don't. But I, but there was something I wanted. And I think it was just a piece of something for myself. I mean, you know, my husband's got a good job and, and we're really lucky in that respect. But there's something in having something for yourself. Oh, yeah, a million percent. And something for you that makes you, you and you proud. Yeah. yeah. And I think loads of women feel like that, don't they? 
Yeah, but it's a, it is like honestly, I don't think people say it enough. It is a massive jump to go from being employed to self employed. Like yeah. stress and like you said, anxiety of going yeah. like I'm gonna like piss off and leave a job where I know yeah. I'm paid every week or every yeah. month guaranteed to literally go and take a chance on me being a success and you're yeah. left with this is on you now like that's yeah. on you and that was the thing like when we started that was one thing that we both said no help from anybody you know no help from spouses or anything like that we're doing this this is our baby this is our thing they don't get involved in it financially or with their advice or their input or their opinions like this is our thing and we're doing it um, but it was, you know, if it had all gone tits up, I think I would have been really embarrassed. Yeah, like, you know, I started that business and then it didn't work. But per, for a person, you know, that's your ego, isn't it? But for a personal thing, per, from a personal perspective, like heartbroken because it's like a direct representation of you, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a piece of you. So if it fails, you failed. Um, but if if you don't try, you're never ever gonna know, are you? And it's always gonna nag. You always. Uh, one thing I live by is I'd rather regret something I tried than regret. Yeah. Definitely. And and you know what? I have absolutely no regrets. Yeah. So that says more, doesn't it? it? Says something more. And is it doing well then? So how did it how did it go with like in terms of being brand new? And you were quite young. How old were you when you said you? Were... I was twenty. Uh, was I twenty eight? I'm nearly 30 now. No, I must have been 27. 27 when we started it. really young to, like, leave and, and start afresh. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe that was what I had... Maybe that was a thing going for me, you know, like I was a bit naive, I don't know. And we just, you know, we just went for it. Um, we opened a small salon um, with enough stations for me and Sean, and we took on an apprentice who's still with us now. She's actually going just about to be qualified um and then very very quickly we realized we needed more space we couldn't fit people in so in the October our landlord who we leased the property off came to us and said oh so-and-so's leaving two doors up that's become available um you know I wonder who will get in there and I was like oh well, we need to move. We need to. We need a bigger space. We need more sections. And he was like, "Well, come and have a look at it." Anyway, it had a beauty room, and it was just something. It just felt right, and we we just moved over. We and we opened that. So we opened the salon in June, and then we opened the new salon, Kane and Fellow Two Point at Christmas in December. And um, you know, it was more. It cost more money, and it, we, we we had to refurb a whole new salon. We needed more equipment, more stuff, more stylists. But that was, you know, it was just a natural evolution. Yeah. And did it? Has it paid off? Has it been? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. So now we've got um, BA Beauty, which is the beauty room, and Bethan's our beauty therapist. She does facials, nails, massage, all those kinds of things. Um, and we've got one, two, and another stylist. Yeah. So there's six of us all together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was just you two, like what? Yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So when, obviously, I know you said there that you had to, you didn't know when you were going to be having a baby and then you wanted something for you, but yeah. when did you think, right, did you plan to have a baby or was it just like, whoa, I'm pregnant? So what we said was, because obviously um, – it's just something all women want to do one day, isn't it? You know, or most women do. Um, and it was kind of like, oh, when we have a baby, when we have a baby. And then um, it suddenly just, it, it felt like, oh, I can't yet, I can't yet, because I've opened the salon, I can't yet, I can't yet. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, actually, you know, we've got staff now and, we, and the salon's up and running and we found our little groove and we're, and we're sort of you know picking up speed and now is the time where it's actually um I wouldn't say self-sufficient but it but it almost runs itself you know yeah. everybody's happy we've got a good little balance and um it I said when it's been open two years 
will start trying. And then I was one of those really lucky, annoying people that fell on the first try. So yeah. when that happened, I mean, I've got friends who've, who that hasn't happened for. Um, so I don't, I don't say that I felt, um, you know, it was, I felt, oh my God, I didn't expect it. Yeah. You know, I thought it'd take a long, long time. And then I was like, are we ready? Am I ready? What have I done? And then actually, as it turns out, I highly recommend it. As long as you feel that you can, you know, your business can keep going and you can, you can confidently carry on. It was the best, yeah, the best time. The timing was perfect. Yeah. And, and, and in fairness, there's never going to be, when you plan it, no. there's never going to be a perfect time. No. Like every time people, which is why a lot of babies aren't actually officially planned because yeah. when you want to sit and plan a baby it, there's always a reason why oh well this and it's like ah I, I was this i was similar we for, for my little girl for our third i um had the coil removed the week before my wedding because i was like right it'll give me a few months i was getting my friend was getting married in the april yeah I was made it broad so it's like yeah. give me months i might be pregnant for chelsea's wedding but it'll be all right i can go tea with yeah. that I'm older Went on my honeymoon, came back pregnant. <laughs> this is it, isn't it? Like, oh my God, and I missed the wedding and, and I didn't... Have the <laughs> I had the baby seven days before she got married, but it's like, you don't expect it to happen that quickly, but when it does, at the end of the day, there's never going to be a perfect time of a baby. No, there's always something, isn't there? Yeah, there is always something. So how have you found juggling, like, being a new mum and work? Um, now... Lockdown came at a really funny time for us. So it's kind of bought me that maternity leave because the salon was shut from March up until July. And that bought me that time to switch off from it completely. So I feel really lucky in that respect. I'm taking that as a positive thing to come out of lockdown um, in that I really could just switch off and not have to think about it. Um, but when everything started up again, it meant it was all hands on deck and we had to really, really be prepared um, and really, really squeeze all those clients in um, who's, be, who's missed out. Um, and then it's happening again. You know, we open in December and we've got to get all those Christmas clients in in three weeks, basically. Um, when it did reopen, like when it went and it did reopen after you'd had your time. Yeah baby how what was that like trying to because does he work or your husband works away so how did you yeah. find like, baby work getting everything done so i was breastfeeding up until six months and she would not take a bottle so she wouldn't go to anyone um she couldn't go to anyone longer than so like say four hours because i was petrified that she was going to starve <laughs> so um that put a lot of stress on things um and I was really dreading it. I was really frightened of, like, you know, what if I go back to work and then she starves? Yeah. Um, and she was point blank refusing. <laughs> but you find, if you leave that baby and a bottle, she'll get to a point and she will take that bottle because you're not there. Oh. Um, when I, so when I, when I went back to work, I was not going to, like, dreading it. I was dreading leaving her. How could anybody know what to do with a baby but me? You know, no one else has had a baby but me. I the only I know what she wants and she likes and this cry and that cry. And um, I mean, luckily, my mother-in-law is really, really good. And she sees a lot of us. So it, it is, you know, they have got a little thing going on. So I felt confident that she was going to do everything the way I like it and all that. Yeah. When I did my first day back at work, oh, my God, I felt like I'd been on a night out. I was like full of beans. I'd been chatting to everyone and seeing people and I didn't have to think about bottle times and what am I doing? And when was the last nappy and this, that and the other and the nap time and it's so many hours after the feed and yeah. you was, I was talked you. about, yeah. And like I got a bit of myself back and honestly, Sean had put this playlist on, this 90s playlist on in the salon and I was bopping around and, and then when I finished... I sat and had a drink before I went home you because know. I just felt like, oh, I'm not ready. I still want to be me a little bit longer. And I, I've been dreading it and dreading it and dreading it. 
this like full day, this nine to five of leaving her. And then when I got there, I was like, this is amazing. So, and then my friends who've gone back to work after maternity have said the same. So I would say, that's one thing I would say is, it's not as bad as you think. You know, you dread it. And then it happens and you're like, oh, quite like that. Yeah, because it's like, let's be honest. The hat, I, hat, I say it quite a lot in these interviews. Hats off to any mother who's full time. Hats off to you. 100%, yeah. One million percent, I could not do it. I tried. Yeah. But like, like my, when my, when he worked away and I was on maternity, I had a newborn and two kids, and yeah. I, oh God, I nearly went insane. I went, yeah, in, yeah. I don't love being a mom. I absolutely love being a mom, but you get to a point where, like you've just said there, you actually forget what being a normal person is, and you're yeah. programmed like a robot to just be mum. So yeah, you what being you is that like you literally lose yourself. This is it. And being sorting out my wardrobe for my clothes. Oh, what clothes am I going to wear for work? Because I've been wearing the same leggings every day for seven months. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. My maternity leggings did the journey even after mm-hmm. maternity. Like, oh, I've been to wine, man. Yeah, <laughs> I was still rocking in mine when Alba was like six months old because it was like still classed as needing these because I don't yeah. need to be wearing Essential. But yeah, like definitely go- going back to work, like, if you if you love, I'm a big believer, and if you love what you're doing, yeah, work isn't work. Mm-hmm. It's like you're doing something you're passionate about when you love it, so it's like a buzz. So, I don't even think you have to love what you do. You just have to have someone who's a bit sounder in your office or whatever. Don't you like if you're surrounded by people who you can't relate to, you're gonna absolutely hate life, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. And would you say that like once you get back into the swing of things, and once you you cut the cut the umbilical cord and, and, you know, you take the leap. Yeah. Is it not as bad as it seems? Oh, my God, I loved it. I just, I can't stress to you how it, I'm so excited to go back <laughs> because I know she's going to be safe, well looked after. She absolutely loves the people who are going to be looking after her. I'm going to put her in nursery one day a week. I think that's really good for her to spend time with kids her own age teach her she's not the only baby in the world and you know but ha- however you're going to get your child care whether your mum's doing it or your friend or you're doing a nursery or child mind or your husband whatever just have a bit that bit of time I, like I, I feel like I'm talking to my old self like like I totally lost that part of me and I I even things on Instagram I didn't know what to post that wasn't about the baby you know what I mean? And then once I'd had that day at work, I thought, oh my God, you know, like I just felt so much like my old self. And I think, don't get me wrong, I can't stress enough, I was dreading it. And then once I did it, I, I'm really looking forward to it. To Then that second lockdown was announced and I was like gutted. <laughs> um, I'm just, I just think, because I'm only going to do three days in the salon and then the rest will be, you know, admin's ongoing, you never switch off from admin. Um, it's just lovely to have that time where it is just for you. Yeah. And obviously with you running it as well, you've, you've been, even though you've been technically off, you've still been yeah. doing the actual back work and the ground yeah. work the salon, like, yeah. do, do. That's an ongoing job in itself, so... Like the wages and the social media and the accounts and the tax and things, those have obviously still been going on um, behind the scenes, behind lockdown and behind, you know, maternity leave and stuff like that. I mean, when I was in the hospital having the baby, I was still doing things. I think, in the, was it the night before I did the stock and, and things like that? You know, I've done, you can't turn those things off. Yeah, it'd be like a full-time 24-hour job, isn't it, when you run your own business? Yeah, because you can't switch off from it, can you? And much as, like, I mean, the girls, luckily, are brilliant. Our team is really, really good. Um, So I can really not look at the appointment book and just know that they're doing all that side of things. But I still need to order the the colours and the things for them to use. And you're always going to worry about it, aren't you? It's your baby. So, into, I want to ask about the Insta, because I really like your Instagram. <laughs> so, did you set out for it to be like it is, in terms of, like, it's almost like a bit of a blog, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, no, I didn't start out like that. It started out because I was going travelling with my two best mates. I didn't even have Facebook at the time. And um, I made an Instagram to 
record, you know, like a diary for, for this year around the world that we were doing. And then as time went on, I just would post things. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a selfie. But, and I love a filter and all the rest. But um, as time went on, I just started doing more honest stuff. And I think, you know, we're, if we're all a little bit more open and honest about stuff, it, but it's having the confidence to do that, isn't it? And, the, you know, daft things will get a laugh and I'd think, oh, actually, that's a bit relatable then, isn't it? And then when I was pregnant and I was just full of water retention and, like, got really big and eating all the crap that I was eating and I was thinking, God, other people are, like, eating the five a day and, you know, they're being really healthy. And here's me. I've had McDonald's and Greg's for breakfast every day of my pregnancy. And, you know, as long as I'm taking my folic acid, surely it'll be all right. And then, yeah, I just think, you know, like, she, she is, she's my absolute world. But sometimes they're really annoying, aren't they? Yeah. And, like, sometimes you do want a bloody break. Um, so, yeah, then once, so through pregnancy, I think my Instagram started to change a little bit to, like, because I had changed, and then once I had her, it changed again because it's all accounts of, like, this is real, isn't it? This is real parenting and motherhood and... Sometimes they're getting on your nerves and sometimes you just want them to go to sleep. Yeah. And sometimes you've got shit on your clothes and they're being sick. I on loved, you. Um, there was one in particular I love from Holiday. He did a post on Holiday. Oh, yeah. I thought, oh, my God, I can totally relate to that. Like, wow. Yeah, because that's another thing. My captions, before it would be like, out with the girls and da 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 which is... Fine and great, isn't it? Because I love to see other people's out with the girls' pictures because what they're wearing and where they've been and where they're going and who are they with and how's the hair. And But then as time's gone on, yeah, I've started to write these, like a blog, yeah, he did write like a blog. And I don't know when that started happening. Um, and at the minute, it's really funny because I do loads of stories, but I never hardly talk in my stories because I feel really self-conscious. But I've got so much to say. So at the minute, I've just started using cloth nappies, reusable nappies. Now, if you'd have said to me six months ago, even after I'd had the baby, that um, about cloth nappies, I'd be like, I'm not washing shit through my washing machine. But there's so much to know about it, right? It can be as hard or as easy as you make it. And I'm, I know it's coming, and I'm going to do this big post about cloth nappies. But I can't bring myself to talk on my stories. like, And it's so funny, isn't it? Oh my God, just do it. I know. Like, if you want, right, every single person, like I do videos and I know that probably 90% of the people watching them are either cringing, taking the piss <laughs> or think what the hell are you doing? But yeah. who cares? Really? Yeah, yeah. you're dead right. Who with matters will be supportive. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give you like good feedback and I'll just listen and say, go you, like well done for being brave and doing that. I do feel like it's like a final hurdle <laughs> to throw myself in because why not? You know, maybe it's the Teesside accent, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. I, I... <laughs> yeah, I'm from MO, like if I can do it on this, you can do it. Like your accent is nowhere near as bad as mine. Like just at the end of the day, just be you. The reason that yeah. people you and the reason people are like me I don't know you I looked at your Instagram and I liked it because I knew <laughs> it was relatable like yeah I wanted you to come on because I know there'll be many women out there who can relate to you and it's because you're just being yourself so get mm -hmm. the camera and just record yourself and if anyone doesn't like it then screw them like right yeah. I'm doing it while I've got my makeup on I'm gonna do it today yeah, I'm talking story. <laughs> for the audio that we're recording <laughs> Yeah, I'll, that's it. I'll do it. Please do it, and I will. I will support it. So you've got one fan already. <laughs> um, this one will be a bit hard for you to answer. I think maybe it might not be. It doesn't have to be work related, but right. I want to be honest and say what has been the most difficult time of the journey for you so far. Of motherhood. Of motherhood, working you as a person. Just even if it's just a personal thing, like what has been the biggest thing that you've had to go through for you oh my god do you know what the hardest thing is having a poo after you've given birth oh my god <laughs> that like, nobody told me like how you'd feel down there for six weeks did like you 
Yeah. So oh, I went into labour. Well, I was induced and blah, blah, blah. I was in labour. I was three days. Then this, that and the other. And it wasn't happening. And eventually I could, I could push. And I thought, this is it. I've made it. I've, I've got to this point. And in about 20 minutes, she'll be out or he'll be out. We didn't know what we were having. And it'll all be over. Anyway, that didn't happen. She got stuck. They had to give me an episiotomy and forceps. So an episiotomy is you I'm cut from front to back. Have a clue. What's that? Yeah. So they cut you yeah, from front to back. And I think a little bit to the side oh. as well. Oh, you poor thing. I know, I know. And I didn't really know what an episiotomy was, even though I signed for it in the hospital. I signed to have an episiotomy in the forceps and blah, blah, blah. And then pushed her out and they pulled and it, she, out she came and it was a girl and I really wanted a girl. Really, really wanted a girl. So I was just so, so happy. Sean was crying. I was crying. You know, she's all right. She's here finally. It's over. And it's done. And then um, they said, right, we're just going to stitch you. And I, was, I went, oh, I have a tour. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I know. <laughs> um, and yeah. Like, I just didn't know. No, you haven't taught. <laughs> no, you haven't taught. You, you were open, girl. <laughs> so, after that, they, st they stitched me back together. And um, I came home. I cried all the way home. I was just so relieved because it, because it was in lockdown. Sean had to leave before she was even two hours old. Mm. And I had to stay in for 24 hours because she'd had I'd had forceps and stitches and what have you. So... When he finally picked me up, she was over 24 hours old and I'd, I'd just cried in that hospital. I just felt like I couldn't enjoy her without Sean there. To, like, this is husband Sean we're on now, yeah. not work Sean. Although it, it is like a three, three man relationship. Um, so when I got, when Sean picked me up, I was just so relieved that he could, he, he was with her now and that was it and, you know, and I thought, right, now it's done. Now it's, we can just go home and be a family. And then I stood up off the bed and I've never felt pain like it. And waddling from that hospital bed to that car was hell. And Sean's there, like, get a picture of me, get the picture of me carrying the baby seat out into the car, get that going home picture. <laughs> and I was going, I can't, I can't walk, I can't walk. It was horrendous. Got into the car, got halfway home and the hospital rang. They hadn't given me an injection. We had to go back. Oh. So I sobbed all the way back. And then those first few days, I was trying to get her to latch on. She wasn't latching on because I'd had an episiotomy. And so she was really drowsy and I was petrified that she's not feeding, she's not feeding. And I really want to feed her myself. And, da -da 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 -da. and nobody was with me apart from obviously Sean, but... Nobody was allowed in the house. It was locked down. We were terrified of Corona. And I, I felt really, really, what the fuck is this? Yeah. What, is, what are we doing? What if, what if, you know, how do we keep her alive? Yeah, what if she breaks? Like, how, who's let me come home with this baby with no help? And then, um, yeah, for six, for six weeks, every time I stood up for more than about five minutes, I had this overwhelming sensation to sit down like this real pressure. And nobody told me that I wasn't going to feel myself again down there for six weeks. It was a mess. Nobody tells you that. Nobody talks about the state you're going to be in. No, they don't. It's just like, go on, get in, get out. And yeah. then, oh yeah, that way, you're now fully open. And yeah. yeah. And like... I just now when I see girls have had a baby on Instagram I message them listen if you need this stool softener it's breastfeeding fondly and da, da, da. hold the front while you mm. and like I try and how are you feeling down there I felt normal after six weeks because I just feel like because we don't talk about it enough because you know I would have never have talked about it before and before I had a baby if I seen a girl talking about it I'd have been like oh shut up do we really need to know but now I look for those like there's an account on Instagram motherhood uncensored and it really helps me because you see people in the not in all the glory and there's nothing more refreshing than seeing a girl in a maternity knickers holding a newborn baby looking real is there no I'm, I'm fully fully behind you on that like a million percent like mm -hmm. 
it, nobody actually does give you the shitty side of it. Like, don't get me wrong, you hear the scary story, yeah. but the reality is that is real life. Even someone yeah. who's just a slight tear or yeah. the little cut, you had like yeah. a really bad or a section. You yeah. know, like my friends that have had sections, that's not a bloody walk in the park. The park, it's a major, major operation, and people think it's the easy way out, don't they? And it's bloody not, is it? You know, like, it's it's a huge, huge procedure. You're being cut open, you know, and it's it's a long road to recovery. I, I just think there's no easy way of doing it, but it's bloody worth it, isn't it? Maybe you should start speaking about that a bit more. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the other day, someone had tagged me in those, share the first picture of your baby. And so I went back to March and I found all my newborn baby pictures and did it. And, but the first genuine one is me, legs akimbo. Um, getting stitched up and the baby on my chest and it's yeah that, and I thought well this is it it's real and shouldn't I practice what I preach and here we are then here's me getting stitched and I would have I wouldn't have wanted everyone to know that I had my mini stitched up do you know what I mean but I did and why not do you know oh, what at the end of the day you've exactly got to in you. like that's that's what you went through and yeah I love labor like all my friends think I'm a weirdo but I absolutely love I it. think you're a weirdo <laughs> But I didn't have anything like yours. I was lucky. I was literally... My what, did you just pushing out? Literally, first one was three hours. Second one was two yeah. hours. Second one was an hour and a half. Like, in and out, done. Like, so... Oh, my God. It was intense, and it hurt. And I, I tore, like, you and stuff. Yeah. The math is vile. But I love it. Like, I feel like you're, like, a warrior afterwards. Like, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I done yeah. that. Look at that. I did that. Like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you only get that side of it, like the oh, well done, you've done this, and you're like, yeah, but me foo is absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> but I've been sat on a travel pillow for three days. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you should speak a bit more about that because there's probably a lot of women out there who are embarrassed to talk about it when really yeah. there's a lot of relate relatability to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so my last question for you, love, is if your children or child could learn anything from you what would it be and why um do you know what i think the one thing that will just get you through life is a sense of humor isn't it whether it be like don't take yourself too seriously or you know because I've had some, I've had a pretty rough paper round, you know, like I've been through a little bit of shit, like we all have. Um, and if you can't laugh, if you can't have a little laugh, then you've got no hope, have you? So I would say, yeah, a sense of humour or a little bit of a, an approach to life, like just not too serious. Nobody gets out alive, do they? No, and you've just so got... So might as well enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, that's the one thing. If I could give her one thing, it would be a sense of humour. Yeah, and to be resilient with it. That you... Yeah, yeah, because that's, that, that's, all there is, that's all there is to it, isn't there? You know, um, well, then you'll really enjoy, because I know um, for everyone listening, she hasn't listened to the podcasts yet because she's been too <laughs> busy, but episode one, yeah. Please, that because if you're you're um if you love humor and that's the way like your coping mechanism all almost yeah episode one because you'll love her oh really yeah and it's and i totally agree with you because if you can't laugh at the yeah. shit of life how are you going to get through it because there's not yeah. once it's happened once you've been dealt that hand you either yeah. crack and get on with it and and take what you can from it or you lay yeah. down and die. so you have to just get on with it 100% yeah I think that's a lot of my approach to Instagram as well is that like you know add a little bit of humor about it because it's happening anyway like you say it's happened to you hasn't it yeah whether it's getting shit on baby shit or everything yeah everything it's got it you just might as well run with it yeah the good and the bad yeah yeah honesty because i say it all the time but so many people are affected by false social media of perfect yeah. perfect way and it's bollocks it's absolutely and we're all guilty of it aren't we we're yeah. all guilty of i don't share if me and sean have had a row or i don't share if oh my god my first period since i had the baby and i should because when other people share it i find it so relatable 
So why can't I? But there's so much that I still think, oh, no, I just don't. I just can't. Mm-hmm. Even for me, I just can't post that bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And when the... There's a, you'd have to be a very certain type of person. Like there's being private as well. There's being honest on social and then there's actually yeah. being a person and having a private life. Yeah. I don't think anyone would think, right, I've had an argument with, my, with our lads. I'm going to get on and, and tell everyone about it because, you know, <laughs> yeah. you don't really want to do that. You don't want everyone That's to know. That's Facebook star, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. that on Facebook. This is Insta. So like, yeah. but at the same time, it doesn't always have to be absolute, like filtered. Brutal honesty filtered fascination of perfect life because it isn't yeah yeah you're dead right there so it's not necessarily spilling all it's maybe not not giving a false yeah just like when you've had like you see it all the time where like th- people put something out as they're like it's perceived to be oh that's perfect but when you know when when you know really that that's not how mm-hmm. it is but they mm-hmm. want to know that and that's fine if that's how you want to be but then there's people out there who are looking at their own life saying god man shit compared to that yeah. Like, yeah. wow, like I can't, how am I meant to compete with that? And the, the truth of it is, nobody needs to compete with anyone. Your mm. life is full of imperfections, but they make it perfect because that's mm-hmm. your life. It's just being confident enough to say, yeah, this is shit, but this is yeah. good. So like, take the rough with the smooth. You're dead right. You've just hit the nail on the head, though. Not, you might not have to post it, but don't fake it then. Just don't because there's people out there who are so impressionable and they're taking it and they've taken it as gold. And mm-hmm. it's oh, this is the aim, it's not the aim because it's not attainable, yeah, 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 yeah. But I love your Insta and it is real. So, where can people Frankie. find you? Love so on Instagram, um, Frankie Kane X Kane C A I N on I was and that's my personal one, and it's just a load of baby weaning recipes that don't always look great, but she always eats them. Um, a bit, few dog pictures and the odd selfie. Uh, that's everyday life. That's normal everyday life. And then my salon Instagram is Kane and Fellow, and that is hair, beauty, and, you, you know, like products and hair salon that's the business that's you know hair in sport and things like that from the salon so there's the two different very different instagrams well i've loved having you on it's felt like Thank having you. a conversation with a friend so i i know everyone will be very easily relatable um for you so thank you so well i've loved being on because i love a good now <laughs> well i'll have you on again soon but thank uh-huh. you very much you have been listening to the money making mothers podcast with carla edwards if you have enjoyed the show then leave a five-star review on itunes make sure to tune in next time and don't forget you can have it all